I love life just as much as the next gal, but the inescapable truth that we will all one day reach our end is made slightly more bearable knowing that, perhaps in a few million years, what's left of me may be preserved in a fossilized gemstone. I know this because archaeologists have found many of our earthly, carbon-based ancestors preserved in some pretty beautiful terrestrial crypts. And some of the processes that create many of the most beautiful gems are also responsible for these incredible fossils. Let's kick this vid off with some low-hanging fruit that also comes from a tree. Amber, before you head to the comments, I want to be clear. I am not talking about Johnny Depp's ex-wife. The Amber I'm referring to is fossilized tree resin. Amber's mainstream claim to fame is its supporting role in Jurassic Park, where scientists took dinosaur DNA from a mosquito encased in amber to create the giant creatures that inhabited the island. Such a task may be more difficult than the film makes it seem. More on that here. But that doesn't mean the prehistoric creatures caught in this fossilized goo can't give us insight into the anatomy of these long dead critters. For paleontologists, amber is valuable because it preserves objects that would otherwise be broken down over time, but that's not nature's intended purpose for this organic gem. As I said earlier, amber was originally tree resin, which comes from a variety of plant life. This resin is a defense mechanism, kind of like how we humans form a scab after we get a cut. After a tree is, uh, let's say, pecked by a woodpecker, the resin is secreted in an effort to prevent further damage. The resulting resin picks up seeds, leaves, and occasionally bugs as it runs down the side of the tree. If the resin sample gets gets buried after it reaches the ground, protecting it from the elements, it can potentially become a beautiful piece of amber. Now, it's not just bugs and seeds that get caught in this viscous material. There are some pretty awesome arachnids preserved in amber, like this spider attacking a wasp. I'm sure if that wasp had any semblance of emotional intelligence, he'd be relieved to know that spider died trying to murder him jokes on the spider, right? There's also this salamander who clearly had a rough day before reaching his end. This little dude is missing a leg. There's also this extremely well-preserved gecko ancestor who happens to be one of the first gecko species to ever exist. But it's not just goop from trees that make great fossils. There's also wood that's been turned to stone. And it didn't even take a stern gaze from Medusa to do it. Because of the ever-evolving topography of the earth, many trees were buried during glacial periods, or even something as simple as a tree falling into a river. Whatever the process, if a tree is buried quickly enough, it'll be protected from decay. Over time, mineral-rich groundwater will absorb into the soil and sediments containing the buried plant life, slowly replacing the organic mineral with silica, calcite, and pyrite. If you want to learn more about petrified wood, check out this unboxing I did with my friendly neighborhood geologist, Elizabeth. I know you'd probably like to talk about bugs and trees this whole video, but if you're anything like me, the first things that come to mind when discussing fossils are dinosaur bones. Just as I thought. Totalosaurus West, Elizabethus. And funny enough, the process of preserving these bones is nearly identical to the process of petrifying prehistoric trees. When I was a kid, I just assumed that every dead dinosaur's bones could be found in the earth and that bones last forever, but that's just not the case. What Dr. Alan Grant uncovers at the beginning of Jurassic Park isn't actually bone at all, it's rock. Protected by sediment made from sand, silt, or volcanic ash, the dino remains weren't washed away are consumed by other living creatures. The only thing that managed to get these dino bodies was mineral-rich water that, just like with the trees, slowly replaced the organic bone with these minerals, leaving only the original structure of the bones behind. The type of rock that forms can vary depending on the minerals left behind, which is why some of these fossils look more psychedelic than others. If silica-rich water is part of the fossilization process, it could potentially leave behind silica spheres after the water evaporates. This process would repeat itself time and time again, leaving behind a fossilized opal. You heard me right, an opal-shaped dino bone or other prehistoric object. Explorers have discovered opalized plants, shells, and crustaceans. There are even some samples of dog-sized dinosaur bones that are preserved in opal, like this one found in an opal mine in Australia. Are you being slowly consumed by small drops of tree resin? Let us know in the comments below, we can help. And don't forget to like and subscribe. For more information on the topics we discussed today, check out the links below. Thank you for watching.